I'm Alderman Bob Donovan. I represent the 8th Aldermanic District. Joining me here today are several individuals. Randall O'Toole from the Cato Institute, Brent Healy from the MacGyver Institute, Luke Hilgeman from Americans for Prosperity. Of course, we're here today to discuss the streetcar initiative. Quite frankly, a project that I believe, if it moves forward, and it's certainly planned to move forward, that decades from now, people will look back at this and refer to it as perhaps one of Milwaukee's biggest public works boondoggles in the history of this community. We don't know who will run the streetcar. We don't know who will maintain the streetcar. We certainly don't know who will pay for the streetcar or how much we will all pay. And yet, it's moving forward. We're here today to specifically look at a particular issue of the streetcar. The proponents of the streetcar uh, seem to point quite often to Portland, other communities around the country, uh, in an effort to advance this idea, really a fallacy in my terminology, that by advancing the streetcar, it will somehow lead to huge economic development initiatives. I don't see that, and I think Mr. O'Toole's study, quite frankly, debunks that entire theory. But before I introduce Mr. O'Toole, I do want to say this. This issue is certainly controversial. It has gotten to the point where arguments, tempers have flared, and I believe, unfortunately, there are individuals in this community that if they don't like a particular message, find it necessary to attack the messenger. And that's disappointing. I will simply say this, I don't give a damn who the messenger is as long as the message is accurate. And if any individual has evidence to point out that somehow Mr. O'Toole's study is inaccurate, I would urge them to come forward. Otherwise, I would simply ask them very humbly and very respectfully, shut up and start telling the truth to the citizens of Milwaukee. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Randall O'Toole from the Cato Institute. Randall, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the Cato Institute is the nation's premier free market think tank. And my title with the Cato Institute is I'm Cato's official rail nut. I love trains. The very first job I ever had was restoring streetcars in the Oregon Electric Railway Park. I uh, have worked on uh, restoring steam locomotives. I've actually owned five railroad passenger cars. I have my own website dedicated to the history of trains. Uh, and so I, I look at trains fondly, and I wish the trains and I wish the streetcars were efficient. But when I sit down and think as an economist, and I think of who benefits and who pays, and what the value of streetcars and other forms of rail transit uh, and intercity rail are, I find uh, is seriously lacking. At one time, about 100 years ago today, more than 800 American cities had streetcar lines. Uh, and since then, between 1913 and 1966, all but six of those cities tore out their streetcar lines and replaced them with buses. And all the reasons why they replaced them with buses are just as valid today. Buses cost less, they cost less to build, they cost less to operate, they're more flexible, uh, they can go to wide ranges of places, anywhere that the street goes. You don't have to build a lot of infrastructure. Uh, they're compatible with cars. Uh, they do not cause a lot of congestion by themselves. And they can move a lot of people. 
the idea that somehow if we go back to the 19th century and if we rebuild our cities to look like the 19th century, that we'll somehow be happier, uh, you have to look back to the 19th century and say, well, what were the conditions then? Most people were poor. Most people did not, could not even afford to ride a streetcar uh, because they were so expensive. And, and the same thing would be true today. Now, I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and Portland has become the icon for streetcars today because Portland built a streetcar line and, and opened it in 2001. Now, what they tell people when you visit Portland is, we built this streetcar line, and look, we got all this economic development along the line. What they don't tell people is, when they built their first light rail line, in 1986, they zoned it all for new development, and they got zero new development. They got zero transit-oriented development of the kind they wanted, high-density, mixed-use development. It was only when they began subsidizing it that they started getting new developments. So when they built the first streetcar line in 2001, they immediately gave developers hundreds of millions of dollars in subsidies to develop along the line. And about three-fourths of the line has these hundreds of millions of dollars in subsidies, and they did get billions of dollars of development because of those hundreds of millions of dollars of subsidies, not because of the streetcar. How do we know? Because about one-fourth of the streetcar line goes through a district that received no subsidies, and it got virtually no new development. So it's the subsidies that give the development that create the development, not the streetcar. You could get exactly the same development with the subsidies without the streetcar, but with the streetcar and without the subsidies, you would get no new development. So the streetcar imposes several hidden costs on communities that build it. First, you have to subsidize all the economic development that you think you're going to get because of the streetcar. Second, you have to pay to operate the streetcar. And third, and, and streetcars cost twice as much per vehicle mile to operate as buses do. And third, you have to pay to maintain the streetcar. And that means about every 30 years, you have to go in and replace all the infrastructure, the rails, the wires, the vehicles, everything else, pretty much at the cost that you spent to build it in the first place. And that's a hidden cost because the advocates of streetcars never mention that cost. So uh, deciding to build a streetcar means imposing huge costs on your community getting very few benefits that you can't get by simply improving bus service and bus service that could uh, uh, serve a lot more people over a much wider area uh, at a much lower cost. Uh, did you have anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I thank you all very much. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, of course, is uh, here in Milwaukee. He's uh, going to uh, be addressing a um, meeting of business uh, business folks at the uh, uh, Milwaukee Athletic Club tonight over dinner, and so I thank him for t taking the time to be here and hopefully shedding some light on an issue. As I had said previously, this has become very heated, and it shouldn't be. We as uh, uh, representatives for government have an obligation to seek the truth and not necessarily believe everything we are told. So I would argue this. I happen to believe what Mr. O'Toole is saying. I think his study is uh, pertinent and uh, is important for this city to take a step back and look at uh, precisely what we've been told and what we're uh, uh, moving forward on. I think, as I said previously, it's going to be something that uh, we will regret years down the way.